Welcome to the Jericho Force Podcast, where we learn how to integrate faith into the work that we do. Don't conform to the world's way of doing business. Transform by doing business God's way. Here's our host, my husband, author, speaker, teacher, encourager, and stewardship coach, Jason Davis. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Jericho Force Podcast. I am your host, Jason Davis, a.k.a. Mr. Fortify. And here on the Jericho Force Podcast, we talk about how we integrate faith into the work that we do and how we live out our faith in the marketplace. We've got a really, really exciting guest on the show tonight. She is a powerful woman of God, and I just last year... Uh, recently met her, but I'll tell you, in just my interactions with her on social media and at a conference last year, it's like I've known her uh, for for a little bit now. But before I bring her on, let me introduce you to her. Courtney Martin is a pastor, seasoned sales executive, and growth strategist for spirit-filled churches and businesses. Her creative solutions have cultivated startups crafted multi-million dollar capital campaigns, and constructed fully funded church planting networks from scratch. Courtney couples her 15 plus years of sales and ministry experience to provide resources that instigate growth, build wealth, and encourage world-changing impact. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Jericho Force podcast, Miss Courtney Martin. Hello there. How, How are, are you? I am doing well. How are you doing, Courtney? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you for asking and thank you for having me. Yes. And listen, Courtney, I, I am very gracious you coming on. I certainly know the type of schedule that you keep. And folks, we'll, we'll touch on Courtney's bio here in a second. But when I started the podcast, Courtney, and when I met you last year, it wasn't a matter of if. It was a matter of when. <laughs> so <laughs> that has culminated into tonight. So folks, trust me, prepare for some Holy Spirit fire tonight. Um, she is going to share a lot of wisdom, but Courtney, just so excited and elated to have you here on the podcast. Oh man, I can't wait to dive in. Yes. So Courtney, let's let's kind of start there. Probably, if you're the average person, not that people are average, but if you're if you're just taking a glance at the bio, they see pastor. Like you could just stop at that comma, but it doesn't <laughs> stop there. We continue, sales executive. You could stop there because it's like, I don't know a pastor that's a sales executive. And <laughs> some folks listening might be, well, Jason, you're late. There are pastors like that. So it's like, okay, my bad. But then we don't stop there. Then we go on, and, and this is the one that takes the cake, Courtney. Growth strategists for spirit-filled churches and businesses. Now, I don't know a pastor who's a sales executive who's a growth strategist. I don't think their pastor could. So (laughs) (laughs) please talk to us. We know that you didn't all of the sudden just step into that. So talk to us about your professional background and how Holy Spirit just guided you into your calling as well as into uh, how you bring value in the marketplace. Absolutely. Um, well, as far as the calling aspect, I think that's probably the easier one to, to explain. I was uh, 19 years old uh, in my third year of, uh, at uh, Grambling State University. Um, I had just crossed uh, um, a Greek organization, and I was minding my own business when a couple of friends of mine uh, and frat brothers now invited me to a revival that was going on. I got to that revival, was radically changed and transformed, and from that point, I heard the call um, of God to ministry. Went on to Bible college, got trained, and just started with street ministry, preaching to people, evangelizing, casting out devils, like like very, very old school, like knocking on doors, having Bible studies at people's homes. Um, and as I began to grow in my ministry, 
I simultaneously began to grow in my profession because the way that I paid for school was my job. And I, my first job was with J.P. Morgan Chase in a sales position. Mm. So, um, so for me, I am very used to the aspect of uh, ministry and marketplace happening at the same time. Uh, I, I, some people, they went and they started a church and pulled out chairs and got drums in a PA system, and that's how they started. But for me, it was a mixture of working uh, in financial services and then serving on the weekends and uh, on weeknights at my local church. And so that pattern continued, oh gosh, all, all the way up until now. And for me, it was something that I was bred in, but also what it was that God put on my heart is that I knew that there was going to become a time when I would begin to disciple people and pastor people and shepherd people. Um, and for me, this isn't for everyone, but for me, he said that I don't want you to live off of their tithe. I mm. need them to see you flourish in a certain capacity to know that they can get to where you are. Because sometimes, especially with millennials, uh, even Gen Xers, we are we tend to be very skeptical. <laughs> we <laughs> we we assume the worst first, uh, and then when it's not bad, we're pleasantly surprised. Um, and so because of that, there's been a lot of negative uh, connotations associated with people who lead ministries, that they, just, they, they get the fancy cars and they get the fancy houses, go on all these great vacations, and I always believe in supporting and sowing into your leader. But the, the, the downside is that it's done on the backs of people who only make $25,000 a year. Mm. Um, Right. And so in order to bring about a sense of balance, I want to show them this is how you can actually use your faith in whether you work in a cubicle, whether you run a business, whatever your area of influence is, you can do both. You can serve the Lord with gladness in the house of God, but it can't stop here. I need you to take the power that we pray about, that we preach about, that we prophesy about into the workplace, into your uh, booth at the barber shop. Uh, to your office uh, at the accounting firm, wherever it is that God has planted you, uh, that's where it is that we need to take the power. And I got that understanding from reading, and you tell me when I need to stop. From, <laughs> from mm -mm, uh, The fire is too hot right now. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I got that understanding um, from, from Genesis when God gave Adam um, and the woman the instruction to uh, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, a lot of times, you know, we focus on the having babies part, <laughs> uh, but the being fruitful and multiply. But in order to replenish the earth, that means that they had to take what they had and expand it beyond its, ex its existing borders, right? Mm -hmm. And so we need to be able to do the exact same thing in our lives. One, me as a pastor, as a shepherd, I need to see that the people around me, that the, that the glory, that the prosperity, that the favor that's on my life is expanding beyond my household. And that pours into the people that I disciple, pours into the people that I shepherd, that I train, right? And then I teach them to do the same thing in their lives, because if we all follow the model, that we all will be able to see even, if you will, the kingdom of God begin to expand beyond our wildest dreams. And so um, when I um, started to um, get into the pastoring part, um, I really started seeing that there was this deficit of understanding. We had a lot of faith, right? Mm -hmm. We had a lot of words. We had a lot of scriptures, but we didn't have a lot of strategy. And mm. so God began to give me insight and wisdom, pulling from my own experience um, as a sales representative throughout the years to show people on how it is that they can apply the same principles and understanding in order to either grow their business or expand their influence on their jobs. Folks, that's, and that's just the <laughs> intro. That is just the intro, my God. <laughs> <laughs> You got me wanting to shout. I know that it's not a shouting night, Courtney, but you might have me shouting after that. My listen, goodness. Listen, I will hold you. Listen. <laughs> you know, Courtney, it's powerful. You said we had, we have faith, but not the strategy. I feel like that is that just messed somebody up right there. Mm -hmm. But, Courtney, we need that. Can you just... 
expand, just just linger there for a minute, because you know, as we talk to kingdom business owners, people, you know, kingdom corporate, kingdom employees, like people need to really sit with that for a moment. You you make me think about the book of James: faith without works is dead, or fa- you know, uh, you know, some mm-hmm. scholars might you know, faith without corresponding works is dead and when you say something like strategy strategy is is a version of a good work especially when it's holy spirit inspired so can we just linger there for a second because i feel like some people just might have went whoa what did courtney just say for a second (laughs) absolutely and i'm um, one of the reasons why people don't progress in their business um they don't see the results that they're looking for they don't uh, see the uh, um, uh, path that they desire to take on their career is because a lot of times we assume that vision is enough, mm-hmm. right? So we spend a lot of time and effort journaling. We spend a lot of time and effort cutting out magazines and doing our vision board. We spend a lot of time decreeing and declaring and saying what things will be. We even I even have a a friend of mine, I was making fun of him a little bit, but we're we're good friends. But like we we get to the point where like we're so guarded about our mouth, like it's just like oh no, don't speak that, don't say that. I I declare <laughs> this and I decree that, right? And so I I believe in the power of life and death and the tongue, where it is that we end up, I guess, um, misstepping is that when we assume vision is enough, what happens is we have inconsistent streams of action Mm. because we're depending on what we saw to actually manifest on its own because we assume that speaking is the work Mm. we assume that prayer is the work (laughs) and so after that i prayed and i fasted and i gave but we don't actually put any effort behind it because then we're assuming that for divine favor and open doors. But even if the door is open, it's going to require effort for you to walk through. And so when we assume that vision is enough, it leads to inconsistent action. And of course, if we can't be consistent, we won't be able to stay long enough to, to reap the harvest, to see the results. Um, also, when we assume that vision is enough, it actually puts us in cycles of disappointment that we don't even realize. Mm-hmm. Because what happens is we get our hopes up, we get our faith up, we, we, we get excited because it's the top of the year and this is the year, right? We say it every year, this is, the, this is my year. This is the year of favor. This is the year of breakthrough. This is the year of uh, uh, a promotion and open doors. And so what happens is we get to December 31st because we could see it, we can sense it, we could feel it, we believed it, but because we don't act upon it, we get disappointed at the end of the year, and then it it, it 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 starts to wear on our relationship with God and sometimes our relationship with others as well. Because it's just like, you showed me this. You said that this would happen, and there was just an expectation for him to move when he actually put it upon us to move, right? Because he's, he's, he's in, uh, uh, seated on his throne mm-hmm. <laughs> in the highest of heaven. <laughs> it is us here on the earth. That, re- that are required to make things move. Um, and so that, that's just something that I personally have seen where, um, where we are very, very heavy on the faith. Um, but because of just a lack of understanding for some people, they just, they just don't know, nobody's told them, um, they end up uh, having their own senses uh, uh, and struggles with inconsistency. And then, of course, the battles of disappointment, which makes it very hard to build when you're dealing with depression, right? Because hope deferred makes the heart sick. And so every mm-hmm. year you don't meet that mark, your heart sinks a little bit more. Every year you don't meet that mark, it sinks a little bit more. And so uh, it's important that we realize that action is actually the way to break those cycles of disappointment. Mm. Faith and action. That's so good, Courtney. It's like, hey, we declared, we prophesied, we said, but it's like, hey, did we market? Did we sell? Did we talk to somebody? <laughs> Can I get a meeting? <laughs> Correct. But I, had, uh, I had a friend of mine who um, they are coming to the end of their, their lease, and uh, I was just like, okay, well, have you looked for a new place to stay? And she's like, oh, no, I'll get to it. Uh, and I was just like, okay, you, you mess around, you're going to be homeless. She's like, oh, hey, you know, words are powerful. Don't say that. I said, you have to understand the difference between spiritual laws and natural ones. 
right? Mm. Uh, the, a natural law is like, for instance, if I do not feed myself, I will starve. Mm -hmm. There's nothing, there's nothing else <laughs> to it. It's not a spiritual matter. It's a natural matter. If you do not look for housing, you will be homeless. And so mm -hmm. we have to make sure that we are applying action, physical things that we can do. Well, just like you said, whether it's talking to somebody, getting mentorship, uh, not taking a course, going back to school, um, asking questions, looking for help, whatever it is that you can do uh, within your strength, do that as led by the Holy Spirit. Hmm. That's powerful, Courtney. You just reminded me of the uh, the stewardship scriptures when you think about the parable of the talents. Um, you know, while you might have heard people call it the little big principle, if you're faithful in the small things, you'll be faithful over much. Well, I, it makes me think about the practicality of that like to your point courtney you know you know sowing and reaping it's like hey if you don't steward your car note right your car gets repossessed yeah if you don't steward yeah. your mortgage you get foreclosed on mm -hmm. so it's like even though it's a spiritual principle it prays it, it plays out in the natural it's like that everything must be managed uh, and, and it's that management. And, and that's kind of where I want you to go next. Courtney, you got me excited because I, <laughs> you know how I knew I knew Courtney when I met you, number one, you know, I, I knew we knew each other a little bit from clubhouse. Shout out to KBN kingdom business network. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. when you came to KB and activate, you pulled up on stage and you said, I got notes. I said, I like this lady already. <laughs> <laughs> And a Absolutely. lot of <laughs> I said I like I said I like her already, and I think I'll be talking to her. And one of the reasons why I enjoyed that messaging at that conference, I know that had a goal, and Holy Spirit moved and spoke to you different ways. But something really struck me, uh, Courtney. We talk about stewardship, and some people's brains, you know, it's a ten dollar word that takes people down different <laughs> rabbit holes. But management. Like, people understand that word. Can you just reflect on that a little bit? Because you taught, you said some very powerful things concerning that. It's like, hey, you were talking earlier, sure, we've confessed, we've prayed, we've done a lot of things. It's time to manage now. And so mm -hmm. just talk about just that principle of management that sometimes we, I'm going to call it, we have sometimes poor interpretation of Mm. Yeah. Um, I what this is what it is that I have learned to do, and I encourage um, different people who either I mentor or I work with. Um, if there is an area that God has called you into, whether in business or on your career, you need to do the research on what it's going to take to be successful. Well, first off, you need to define what success is for you. Mm. Right. Let's just take a step back there. We need to define what success is for you, because otherwise you'll be chasing after somebody else's dream, somebody else's goals, somebody else's expectations. And so we have to make sure that a part of the vision that we pray for when we're asking God, uh, when we're uh, writing the vision and making it plain, that part of making it plain is, is writing down the metrics, mm. because management does no good if you don't have any metrics. Right. Mm. You need to be able to measure <laughs> your effectiveness, measure your success, measure how close it is to your goal. Um, so that way, you know that you're applying the right amount of pressure to the right areas um, in order to get the results that you want. So after you define your metrics and the areas that you want to measure, then that's when you can move into the area of management. One of uh, one of the, my favorite books to read is The Four Disciplines of Execution. Mm. Um, and when it comes Great to, book. and this is, this is yes, it's, and so I'm about to share something. It's not my stuff. <laughs> you just go <laughs> read the book. But I just want to make sure I try to get sued. So in the book, it talks about uh, after you set whatever it is that your wildly important goal is, then you want to make sure that you have your leverage in place. And so basically what that means is you need to begin to break down uh, what steps it is that you need to take in order to accomplish that goal. And there are two types of steps. They're called lead measures, and then there are lag measures. I'm going to explain this really quick. <laughs> and so with lag measures, that's basically uh, the results that you want, uh, uh, well, the, the work that it's going to take in order to get that done. 
to the lead measures, it kind of breaks that work down into little pieces so you know exactly what it is it's going to take to input. So, for example, um, if I say that our goal is to grow our ministry by 30 people by July 31st of 2022, you always want to put a date on it. A goal without a date is just a dream. I believe that's how it goes. Um, mm -hmm. So after you set that date, so the lag measure is that means we have to have five people who become members each month in order for us to reach our goal. That's the lag measure. The lead measure is we need, everybody needs to invite 10 people every week in order for us to have invited 100 people. Uh, um, I'm just assuming that the, the, the group is 10 people. <laughs> in order for us to invite 100 people, realizing that about five of them will actually commit out of the 100, right? And mm -hmm. so when you are able to set up your system like that, one, you're able to see what the goal line is. Two, you're able to see what type of work it is that it's going to take. But then also, let's say, for instance, that you don't actually meet the goal, right? You don't actually get to where it is that you want to go. You're able to adjust your measurements to say, okay, we need to... Um, invite 20 people per person because 10 wasn't enough. So when it comes to management, I want you guys to to think beyond just managing people. I, it's about managing the vision, right? Mm -hmm. It's about putting legs on it to to put a, um, a, a framework to it, so that way the so that way you yourself can run with it. One of the things that I talked about in one of the, the most recent conferences that we have with KBN is that whenever it is that you are writing out your vision as well, you want to make sure that you include enough space for other people. You want to build a vision that requires you to bring in help, that requires you to um, hire people, that requires you to uh, um, uh, uh, raise up or mentor some people to support you. Because when it comes to management, after a while, the goal is that it gets big enough that you can't do it by yourself. So you want to make sure that you're bringing in people from all over, that you're, that you're planning for that, uh, to manage the vision, not just by you as a solopreneur, but managing the vision with a group of people who have your spirit, who have your heart, who are able to help carry out the vision. Because again, even if you aren't making um, a pastoring in a church, you're going to be the shepherd of that business, right? You're going to be the pastor of that organization. You're going to be the pastor of your department. And so it's all about multiplying yourself into the lives of those people so that way they can continue the work. Mm. I hope I answered the question. <laughs> no, that that it was that, and then some. We're we're speaking at an overflow now, so it's just. <laughs> I'm, I'm awesome. gonna. You said something. I'm gonna come back to shepherding here in a second, folks. If you're listening to the podcast, I bet you didn't know you were gonna get a master class tonight. I told you it was gonna be good, but Courtney, you speak with such conviction, and we know that that comes from uh, number one, your relationship with Christ, but also you just being very deliberate with uh, your decision making. And so where was the turning point for you thinking about, you know, like your testimony? When did you become a, a woman of such conviction? Just, you know, you know what, there's something that I should do and I should go do it. Like, what was the turning point for you with that mindset? And then also just how your testimony kind of played a factor into that? Okay, so my situation is unique in the sense of, well, probably not for everyone, but some people will be able to relate to this. I have always been a very independent thinker. My mm. parents hated it, <laughs> especially as a teenager, <laughs> right? Because they'll be like, okay, you know, we, you know we, we love you. We want you to do it this way, do it this way, don't do it that way. And I'll be like, but why, though? Mm. I, and so for me, my parents, they took a unique approach to raising. They realized that I don't like being told what to do. And so for them, it's just like, okay, she's going to have to learn on her own, but we'll be there to support her when she falls on her behind because inevitably she will fall on her behind, right? <laughs> and, so, and so for me, from, from a very young age, I was, I was always willing to take risks mm. because in my mind, whatever the reward is, it's going to be worth it. Um, <laughs> just that, That's just the way that I would now that the, the other side of it is this, is that I had to mature into that. Because I would take unnecessary risks and hurt myself, hurt the people around me, uh, uh, have a lot of loss just for no good reason at all. Hmm. And so for me, the turning point wasn't necessarily that I received this new boldness and conviction to step out and say or to do. It's that I got wisdom to carry out these uh, um leadings and unctions more carefully. I was no longer, because the other part of it was this, I was in, um, I, I, I hadn't quite healed 
uh, in my heart from needing to be perfect and needing to perform. And so mm. part of my push to to get things done, to see it happen, to speak up and to say whatever I needed to say was because I felt like I needed to accelerate my path, not realizing that I was trying to outrun these feelings of anxiety, these feelings of abandonment, uh, feelings of rejection, not being understood because I was bullied when I was growing up. And so I'm trying to, I'm working hard, I'm standing firm, I'm speaking, it's blessing a lot of people, but on the inside, I have not healed. And so again, um, a lot of times when you make decisions from a broken place, you don't have all the pieces because you're too blinded to see. You're too blinded by fear. You're too blinded by anxiety. You're too blinded by maybe unforgiveness and anger from things in your past. And so I had to get to the point where I was able to, uh, sit under the scalpel of the spirit, allow him to pull out those poisons and those negative things within me and to begin to mend and heal my past, mend and heal my mind. So that way now, whenever it is that a new opportunity arises, I'm not just running after because I have something to prove. I'm going after because I heard God. And for me, I, I finally got to the place where I didn't need other people's approval. I didn't need other people to agree. I didn't need the amens. I didn't need the support because I believe that if God said it, his word was enough for me. And so that was kind of how I made that transition from just being buck wild and just, just going after every <laughs> opportunity and building as fast as I could and trying to, you know, uh, be the best, be the brightest, be the strongest, be, be whatever. I, I learned to be still and trust that he's God. Mm. And, and that means trusting him with my future, trusting him with the dreams, trusting him with the vision I saw, trusting him with my desires, trusting him with my talents and my gifts. To be still and know that he is God is to know that he's in control and he's got all of this in the palm of his hand. Man, Courtney, that is powerful. You talked about operating out of wisdom and not just, you know, erratic emotion or having a chip on your shoulder because you're, you know, the yep. speed, uh, you know, I think about athletics, Courtney, I, I think there was a, a coach of mine, he said, uh, speed kills, but speed can also get you killed. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and so meaning there were guys that were super athletic and they were fast. And of course, if you're just faster than somebody, they can't do anything with you. But then those same, those same individuals, they had to learn, you have to learn how to use your speed in a given direction for a certain purpose, because when they didn't, then uh, they would overrun the play or they would end up making mm -hmm. a mistake or be too soon. And so that really resonated when you said that. So the wisdom and you said sit under the scalpel of the spirit. My God. <laughs> that is, <laughs> That I mean, I feel like that that messed some people up there. I mean, it's just uh, soul surgery is is what came yeah. to me when you said that. Uh, and then hearing God and not requiring uh, anyone's approval, just being mm -hmm. unapologetic about, hey, God spoke. Here's what his word says. Here's where he's guiding me, and I'm going to do it. I'm not going to worry about what other people are saying or doing. That's huge. And, Courtney, that's why I said I wanted to put a pen in the shepherd because I feel like when you answered that, you gave a backdrop into who Courtney Martin is so that now with what you do in ministry and in the marketplace, now you can shepherd. So can you talk about how – um, even though there's two different goals going on, how does you shepherding as a as a pastor, as a minister, how does that help you uh, when you need to borrow elements of shepherding in, in the marketplace even with like clients or customers? Yeah, um, there are a number of principles that I'm able to borrow um, from the example of Jesus Christ and um, like how he interacted with, with his disciples. Um, one thing was he wasn't afraid to get close. Um, a lot of times when we get into the marketplace, we become rigid and cold um, and distant because it's about business, right? We need to, <laughs> we need to, this, that's all this is about. We need to get, fix the bottom line. 
increase sales, make this happen. And so uh, it's easy to become robotic and cold in those environments when you are focused only on getting the results. But what's happening is uh, a lot of times we overlook the souls that are helping you get those results. And so you have to be willing to get close with them, be willing to learn their story, because sometimes you'll realize that part of the reason why um, Adam G. isn't performing well this quarter is because his wife just gave birth to a newborn and he hasn't slept in three months. Right. And so you are able to meet him where he's at, offer the support that he needs, as opposed to just giving him like a pink slip or a warning or uh, whatever the case may be. So that's, that's one aspect of, of, of shepherding. The other aspect I kind of want to turn to is the idea of shepherding your industry. And this is when you get into the influencing uh, type of role and position. And this is why this is important. Um, throughout the world, the different mountains of influence, we have people who do not know God, who do not love God, who do not serve him, who do not have their intentions, but they are influencing our children, our grandchildren. They have a lot of say in what is being heard and what is being publicized, uh, what is being communicated across the airways, what is being taught, the laws that are being passed. And so in order for us to really get a sense of authority back as believers, we have to be willing to get in front and guide in a different direction. And so for us, we have to do the research, uh, build the networks, find the connections, um, um, find what the, the gaps are, uh, create the plans and the strategies in order to fill those gaps in a way that honors God, but also uh, produces um, wealth or increase or growth in a particular area and be willing to be in the front. Um, um. One of the consistent things, areas of, uh, insecurity that I have seen in a lot of believers is that they are great with leading at church, right? They will be the head usher. They will lead worship. They will be over the hospitality committee. They'll lead the dance ministry. But when it comes to their industry, they want to hide in the background. Mm. Um, that's when the those those fears start to kind of speak it's like oh well you know you're you're a church girl and you know this is this is the world right we have that whole sacred versus secular thing going on um, not realizing that your entire life everything about you should be lived under the auspices of Jesus Christ's rule and reign right and so wherever it is that you go the same way that you have authority in those boardrooms with the executive pastors, the same way that you can have authority in the boardrooms in these Fortune 500 companies. You have to be willing to be in the front to lead the change in order to make sure that the heritage of righteousness that is our responsibility to pass down to the next generation is actually happened. It's in our hands, but we got to be in the front to do it. Ooh, Courtney, you got me ready to do two things. Run through the pews of the church <laughs> and run into the board meeting both. <laughs> yes, that's the point. Yes, I love that. Gosh, the authority. Yeah, it, you know, Jesus said he'd never leave us nor forsake us. And uh, you're right about that compartmentalization. We go to church on Sunday uh, and hey, Lord, you got Sunday, and I'll take Monday through Friday. And it's like, no, He's with you <laughs> everywhere, yeah. perpetually. Yeah. So that I love how you uh, how you tied that in, Courtney. That is powerful. My God, you know, Courtney, as you uh, by now, folks, if you're listening, you you should already know that you need to and want to work with Courtney. But Courtney, let's just talk to to people when you're working with clients what is your uh, your, your process of, like what do you look for first like who's the ideal client and then as you integrate the principles that you talk about like how do you help uh, people win and add value in the marketplace yeah so so for me I uh, tend to mentor and coach people who are just starting their business, excuse me, as well as those who want to scale and grow their business. 
And um, a lot of times what it is that I will help them with when they're just starting is creating the plan um, in order to see where it is that they are, where it is that they want to go. And so uh, one of the things that I offer them is the um, lightning launch uh, business planner. And so I take, I give them 60 steps, step by step, everything that they need to do from filing uh, and registering with their state all the way to their business launch party. Um, I help them uh, articulate their vision and their mission. Um, I give them clarity on what their revenue plan is, even their hiring plan. They know exactly what to expect over the next five years. So we really start to get clarity about what it is that they are called to do, how it is that they will do it, um, and how they'll be most successful. So that's uh, the, 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 the planner aspect. And then I have the uh, lightning launch intensive, and that is kind of the next step. Like after you've started your business and you kind of want to get to the place where you're ready to grow it, I, I walk them through the paths necessary uh, in order to start building out their customer journey so that way they can start guiding their people through a specific place to create a consistent flow of income. Um, I don't have time to talk about it tonight, but basically when it comes to your uh, customer journey, you might also hear it called a sales funnel. You want to make sure that you have content um, and product at each phase of the um, funnel in order to make sure that you continue to build and nurture that relationship. The whole goal is to take them from an absolute stranger to a repeat customer. Um, and so I, in my lightning launch intensive, that's when I teach about that. Um, the next thing that I do, once people kind of get familiar with that or if they're already familiar um, with that particular terminology and they have their funnel set up, that's when I get into the one-on-one -on -one coaching. And we start looking at the gaps. We start looking at ways to automate. We start looking at how it is that we can take them from a $997 course into a $10,000 course, right? So we start looking at ways to change their messaging, to adjust their brand, uh, to uh, present their product because for me, being a the sales um, executive, um, my bread and butter is copy. It's words. It's learning how to use your words to communicate what you need to in order for them to like, know, and trust you. And so um, when I work with my clients one-on-one, -on -one, we start building out the plan. We start adjusting how it is that they're showing up on social media, how they're looking online, whether it's blogs, whether it's um, speaking engagements, YouTube videos, we start messing around with how they do it and make those adjustments so that way they can start to experience the growth that they deserve and also uh, adjust the price point so that way they can experience the wealth and the income that they deserve as well. My God, Courtney. Well, Courtney, let me tell you this. You said you didn't have time, folks. I can tell you Courtney Martin will be back to talk about customer <laughs> journey. I can promise you. We'll talk about dates later, Courtney, but folks, I can promise you this lady will be back. <laughs> it's oh, it, it, I'm telling you, it would be my pleasure. I'm telling you. She will be back. Well, well Courtney, we know that uh, God has you making such – a huge impact both in ministry and business. Uh, just talk to us. What are some uh, some things you have on the calendar upcoming that you're excited about? Uh, events or speaking? What what's what's next for Courtney Martin? Oh my goodness! So here in Tallahassee, um, I am doing this crazy worship movement called Power Nights. And every second and fourth Friday, we come together. I teach, I share, but we just all come together to pursue the presence of God. One thing that I know this nation needs more of is the power of God. Um, there are a lot of competing thoughts, um, theologies, ideologies that are coming up against what it is that God has called us to do, but I believe that even in the days to come, we're going to see a revival of the church. The pandemic was definitely a gut punch, but I feel like we can come back stronger if we are willing to seek him, right? Uh, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sins and heal their land. And that mm. is what we're doing in Power Nights. And it's been awesome. We've been doing it since September absolutely amazing. I do have um, also my discipleship group, my private discipleship group that I do. Um, I just started a new one in February. No, no, 
January. And so every six months I start and I cycle a new um, discipleship group where I take people and I teach them how to pray. I teach them how to hear the voice of God. I teach them how to prophesy. I teach them how to uh, heal and work miracles. I teach them about evangelism, and how they can witness to the people around them. Um, I believe in empowering the body of Christ by any means necessary. Mm. Um, and so, um, although I am not open for accepting uh, new people in this particular cohort, I do have a wait list. Um, and I would be happy to uh, come June and July um, to get everybody plugged in on that regard. Other than that, um, of course, I have my business launch bundle. Uh, if anybody goes to my social media, the link in my bio, uh, they'll be able to access my business launch bundle. They'll be able to access the uh, uh, planner um, in order to help them start a business. And I even have the link if they want to schedule a consulting session with me to do more one-on-one -on -one work. So. Uh, that's what I have going on. <laughs> that is huge. Courtney, how you laid the, it was almost like a setup alley-oop. I was just about to ask Courtney, you added so much value. Folks, don't worry about it in the world of podcasting. You can just rewind that thing, whether you're on Apple or Spotify, whatever <laughs> it is. Don't worry about it. Also, we will have show notes on JerichoForce.com. So we, we do, we release blog posts for each podcast guests so everything courtney is saying we will have shown us oh jason what was the thing she said where's the link where's the website don't worry we got it so that being said courtney where can everybody how can people reach you how can they find out more about you social media websites landing pages where can they go Absolutely. So uh, for more information about me in general, you can go to CourtneyMartin.com, K-O-R-T-N-E-Y, Martin.com, um, to, to get more information about how to work with me, um, how to see some of my products is that, that you can actually take part in. You want to go to my social media pages uh, and like and follow and share and all that good stuff. Um, and it is going to be at I am Courtney Martin. So I'm Courtney Martin. So at I'm Courtney Martin on Facebook um, and Instagram. Click the link in the bio and you'll see all that you need to see. Absolutely. Folks, that was the Courtney Martin dropping wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Courtney, I just want to, as we get ready to close here, thank you so much. I already knew by faith it was going to be a good episode. I already knew that. It was just, you know, the conversation, Holy Spirit was moving, and you were just sparking me to ask different things, but definitely so, so gracious and so thankful for you coming on the Jericho Force podcast tonight. It's been my pleasure. Thanks for the invite. Absolutely. Well, folks, that wraps up another episode of the Jericho Force podcast where we talk about integrating faith into the work that we do. You know how we end things. One of our favorite scripture here, Romans 12, 2. And we put a little remix on it, Courtney. Don't conform to the world's way of doing business. Transform by doing business God's way. We'll see you next time on the Jericho Force Podcast. Thank you for listening to the Jericho Force Podcast. You can catch us live on Wednesdays at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time and on demand. Check out JerichoForce.com backslash podcast for more details. To learn how to live out your faith in the marketplace, grab a copy of Jason Davis's book, Fortify, Being Rooted in God's Plan for Work and Business, available on Amazon.